So I'm so ready for this next speaker because I definitely need it. I'm always looking for ways to create better balance and here to give us his ideas for reclaiming your life. Please welcome Jay O'Brien with Remax Prestige and Client Giant. Jay, we need your help. Good morning. My name is Jay O'Brien and this is a photo of me in 2010. I know you guys are thinking, where does glasses go? So buried up to my eyeballs in a corporate job I absolutely hated, didn't respect leadership, looking for a new job every single day, reading a bunch of books, only to eventually realize that it wasn't that I, I needed a new job. It's not that I had the wrong job. It's that I didn't want a job at all. <laughs> so much like many of you did, I got into real estate. Oh, shit. Real estate. There it is. This is not a Bravo show. I'm sure plenty of you can relate to this photo right here. You're a one man or one woman show. You're responsible for not only drumming up your own business, but servicing that business and doing every little thing that is entailed with that to close every single transaction you get. And unfortunately, in real estate, it's almost become like a glorified term to say you're busy. Like sometimes I hear people talking about other real estate agents, they're like, oh no, he or she, like they're really good, they're, really, they're a busy agent. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not what I like to be. Um, and it's become synonymous with success, which I think is a little ridiculous because anytime you're trading your time for money, that's a way for your life to be consumed by work. As a real estate agent, we know that we have to show property, right? We have a lot of things we have to do. We have contracts that need to be written. We gotta be at the home inspections. We're arguing with the appraiser. We're consoling our buyer on their closing costs. We're hosting open houses, and yes, dealing with very uncooperative agents sometimes. And after a couple years in the business and doing more and more transactions and seeing that my days were becoming eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, I had this recollection back to a book that I had read back when I was 19 years old by Robert Kiyosaki called Cash Flow Quadrant. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this diagram, but basically the nuts and bolts of this are you want to stay on the right side of the quadrant, be business owner, I investor, and steer clear of employee, and S, self-employed. This is a trap that we fall into when we get into real estate as a sole proprietor. At first, it seems great because we have this autonomous schedule and our level of input yields our level of output and we can work whenever we want. But if you're in this room, you're probably a type A personality. And if you're a type A personality being told you can work whenever you want, you're not at the beach at 11 a.m. on a Wednesday. You're working literally all hours of the day because you're yielding more and more money that way. So oftentimes we see that as the success of our business increases, our free time and our enjoyment tends to decrease. They're inversely related. As opposed to the people who have created a business and really optimized this to scale, where the success of their business can increase and live in the same world as their free time and enjoyment also increase. So this raises a few questions. The first is, if you're an independent agent sitting in this room right now, is like, yeah, okay, but I can't just create a business and like scale it out and start hiring a bunch of people. The good thing about real estate is that it's one of the few industries out there where you don't need to sign up for a bunch of overhead and put people on payroll and things of that nature. People are willing to work based on contingencies for a closed sale. Like a transaction coordinator gets paid a fixed amount for a closed file, right? A buyer's agent may be a percentage of the commission on a closed deal. My open houses are hosted by other agents who are chomping at the bit to use it as a platform to qualify leads. That's all good with me. That's, that's what I want. And another barricade that we often see is this is a personal belly-to-belly -belly business. Like, I can't detach physically from my client. They like when I'm there. They want me to be there. And that's often how we get consumed in this. So take a look at other professions, right? You've got your mortgage lenders, your insurance agents, your attorneys, your accountants. 
These professions are extremely important. They require implicit trust. I mean, they literally have your most sensitive information ever. They could ruin your whole life if they wanted to. You're borrowing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars from these people. They're doing your taxes. They're representing you legally. And I don't know about you, but I either very, very, very rarely see the face of these individuals, or I have literally never seen the face of some of these individuals. And it doesn't dilute the trust I have in them because they're able to lean on technology and communicate with me via text, email, calls, and I trust them. I trust their professionalism and real estate really shouldn't have to be that much different. See, there are undoubtedly things that have to get done, tasks that need to be performed in every real estate transaction, right? You've got your showings, your physical inspections, your appraisal, your open house, the final walkthrough, the key exchange, all things that require me to drive to the property, go back and forth. And God forbid I have multiple transactions in escrow. I'm doing this all day long forever and ever and ever. But there are qualified people you can lean on that can do this for you for a small percentage of your check. Besides that, your client isn't hiring you because you're awesome at opening doors. Okay, there are a lot of areas in which you actually make an impact with this person that do not require your physical presence. It really starts with the relationship, right? Building that rapport. Do I like you? No one's going to do business with you if they first don't like you. I don't care how many homes you've sold or how long you've been in the business. If I don't like you, it's over. We're not going to do it. And I'm sure plenty of us in this room have lost a deal to someone who has a family member who just got their license like two seconds ago and said, oh my God, my brother-in-law is going to take the listing. Otherwise, my sister is going to be so mad. Like, it's ridiculous, but it starts there. And then after that, sure, your knowledge. Do you know the area? Your skill set? Are you good at negotiating? Your experience? How long have you been in the business? Your trustworthiness, can I trust that you are going to advise me and my own best interests versus just looking out for your next check? And then, of course, the most important variable in a real estate transaction, and one that I double, triple, quadruple down on and avoid standard marketing at all costs, is making people feel special. Seems pretty, pretty elementary, right? Making someone feel special is arguably the most important factor for repeat and referral business, which is ultimately what we're after. Remember this quote? I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will never forget how you made them feel. So how are we going to make someone feel super special without physically being there? We do it all the time. Look at social media. Geez, how many people in this room feel like they really, really, truly know somebody from email chains, Facebook, Instagram? I mean, there are literally digital relationships at this point. And of course, it starts with finding the right client. There's plenty of you that are like, this would never work for me. Oh my God, my client wants me at every single showing when I have the listing. They want me at every inspection, blah, 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 blah. Just like any company, just like any business, it all begins with creating what I call your box. Your standard business procedures, your policies, your hours, whatever it is you're going to do, you adhere to them and you don't come across as a scrambled, jumbled, independent agent who bounces around all over the place. For me, this requires mutual respect between me and my client, an element of trust. When I tell them how my business works, they get it. They're calling me for a reason. I say, this is how it works. You'll be working with my buyer's agent. They are, their sole job is to be available for you. you. I'll be involved via text, email, phone call, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's literally not a problem ever. But if I have people like this, they're like, I need you to be at every showing at the listing. Um, I need to call you at 11 o'clock at night. I need credit back on the commission and all these psycho requests. I'm like, forget it. Forget the whole thing. They're not for me. It's no longer about the money and yielding more because you're taking away the most valuable thing I have, which is my time. Zooming out and reclaiming your life is the most important part of this equation. And you're not detaching from the personal experience that your client is being delivered. Think about a five-star restaurant, right? Think about your favorite restaurant ever. When you go there, it's not just about the food. It's not about just the service, it's the ambiance, it's the music, it's the lighting, it's everything. And there are people put in place by that business owner to make it feel efficient and deliver the optimal experience for you. So after a couple years in the business, I really truly put this to the test 
and I use some of that free time and enjoyment to do what I love to do, which is to travel. So in 2016 alone, I went to Iceland, Denmark, Greece, Dubai, South Africa, and Sweden. All in one calendar year, most of which were separate trips, not like a one-month trip around the world. And during that time, I was not only servicing escrows, I was putting more deals into escrow because I was leaning on the people I had on the ground while I was away and was still available to communicate via text, via call, via email, making my clients feel very connected. And while I was away, here's what was happening back home. This is a client post on Facebook, out to dinner, to, this is what I do at the close of every transaction. 30 days after closing, celebratory dinner for two, transportation is provided, they're wined and dined on me, they're blasting it all over Facebook. These are dog treats and dog toys sent to a past client of mine after learning that she got a new family puppy. Again, blasted all over Instagram. These are sympathy flowers sent to a client of mine who I learned her, her uncle had passed away. And this is cold medication that got delivered to the front door of a client of mine two hours after seeing her post on Facebook saying, feeling sick, sad face. The point is, you can absolutely connect with people digitally without limiting yourself to trading it for your physical interaction with them. Now, I've given talks on this plenty of times. If you missed the one in New York um, at Inman, you can see it at jobrien.com forward slash video. It's called Delivering Seven-Star Service in a Three-Star Industry. And I go over every single detail of every touch that gets delivered to every client on every transaction I'm in, earning repeat and referral business along the way. Now, I realize a lot of these are manual processes. So as I've given these talks over the years and given away, oh, here's the secret sauce, do this, do this, I've realized that sometimes agents just won't execute on it because at the end of the day, it's another thing to do. So I feel so passionately about this, it actually caused me and inspired me to create my own company called Client Giant. Client Giant is truly a white labeled premium concierge service that is delivering unique touches, gifts, deliverables directly to your clients on behalf of you and your business. A portal where I can literally log in and see what clients I have in there. Are they on an escrow package? Are they on a subscription for top of mind so they're getting gifts long after the transaction closes? Who's getting what, when? Okay, good, they're getting the boxes this week. They got the handwritten congratulations card last week. They're getting a mobile car wash a week after close, dinner for two, 30 days later, an opening escrow gift, etc. It's all visible right here. But the point of all of this is that, look, your clients are not going to rant and rave and remember about your transaction coordinator or the home inspector or who hosted the open house. Just like someone's not going to go to a five-star restaurant and rant and rave and talk about how much they loved the valet or the host or the server or the busboy. They're going to remember the entire experience that was created and orchestrated by the person in charge. And as they drive away from that experience, it's your name on the fucking restaurant. Thank you.